Welcome, Encyclopedians. We are in Stevensville, Ontario, my home, um, where I keep Medina pigeons and a few other breeds, but mainly Medinas. Stevensville is a small village about uh, 20 minutes south of Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. And we're, we're very close to the American border. We're about 10 miles from Buffalo, New York, which is on the Niagara River. Um, I've been breeding Medina pigeons here for roughly seven years at this location and previously at other places we've I've had them since off and on since about 1966. Mm -hmm. okay. As you can tell I've uh, got a few years on my own oh. behalf here. I'm 74 years old <laughs> and uh, plan on keeping pigeons for at least another 30 or 40 years. Okay. So, we do a few other things to keep busy here during the Canadian North. We have uh, dogs, um, two breeds, English Setters, which we sh bred and showed, exhibited throughout North America for many years. Right now we have two of them just as pets. And my wife has two small dogs called Shih Tzus. They're lap dogs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, we do a lot of gardening. We're on one acre a uh, lot. And we grow a lot of flowers, uh, trees, shrubs, keep busy doing that throughout the year. Medina today in North America is an exhibition breed. Um, they're not very good flyers. They don't need a lot of room for flying. Um, they were, they've evolved from a, a, t a city in Italy called Medina. And then in Italy, they were a flying breed. They were, um, loft owners held them in competition and let them fly up and they tried to steal other people's flocks. Uh, they were distributed from there throughout Europe and most of the work with Medinas was done in England particularly in the 1800s and early 1900s, where they started to develop them more as a shape breed. They got the more uh, turned up body, the tail tilted up. Uh, and this continued right up into 1940, 1950, when a lot of Americans and some Canadians started importing from England, and they really developed and evolved into a different breed, different looking anyhow. Um, the colors are basically the same as they were in England, and some of those colors came over from Italy, but the body shape and the standard that we have now, which is um, developed or, or carried by the host club, the main club, the National Medina Club in the United States is known as a, the, if you will, maybe the US standard. Uh, it's also followed by other countries in the world, particularly in Canada and in Australia. In Europe, they have split off into a couple of different types of Medinas. There's a German Medina, which is a much smaller breed, mm -hmm. uh, at least in body size and a different shape. And in, in England, the standard, and uh, also in other parts of Europe, is similar, except the legs are much shorter and they're a much rounder bird than we have. Okay. This is a drawing of the uh, of a standard of uh, the Medina, standard of the National Medina Club. American Host Club, okay? And the standard is broken down into a number of sections. Uh, number one would be um, the confirmation part of it, which includes in points that are allocated to the beak and the eye and the head and neck down to here. Also the body, the depth of the body, the shape. Shape is very important, of course. You can see it's, the Medina is known as a bird of curves. And if you look at it, and you look at a good Medina, you'll see the leg coming right up through the middle, similar to a wine goblet. And it should be very round and evenly round on both sides of the leg coming up through the breast and up into the, the rear of the, the pigeon. We like to see the back very short. Mm -hmm. So the tail tilts up, but not too high. Okay, and the legs being very straight and central. One difference nowadays, I would say, uh, in winning Medinas between 
this picture and the actual birds is the legs are getting longer and I see that as being a change in the standard in a few years. Um, not a lot longer but perhaps half an inch. Time will tell where it'll go. Color is very important in Medinas. There are some 160 recognized different colors and patterns and I think there's 20 points acknowledged of the 100 points in the standard for color alone. Okay, but color is only part of it. So uh, from there you look at the birds and examine them and compare them to the standard. Yeah. Medina, Medina fanciers can be involved in many different shows. In Canada, the uh, Central Sh Club is called the Canadian Pigeon Fanciers Association. That's an all breed show, but it blankets pigeons from coast to coast. And they host big annual shows that rotate geographically across the country. Usually they're in, more, more commonly they're held in Eastern Canada, in Ontario and in Quebec, because that's where the bigger populations are. In, in the United States, the blanketing the big over, uh, the big club is the National Pigeon Association. And they cover the whole geography of the United States. And they have an annual show uh, that rotates throughout the country. One year it might be in California. The next year it could be in Kentucky and then in Florida and up north again. Um, so it rotates from year to year depending on the host club. Um, and in Medina's, we have several clubs that are involved. In Canada, we have two. We have the Ontario Medina Club. And in Quebec, there's a Quebec Medina Club, and each of those clubs will host a show. Our annual show, which is often affiliated with the National Medina Club in the United States, which is a blanket club, we're a region of it. We're a region, we're known as a Region 8 geographically, which covers all of Canada. And we'll have a Medina show uh, in Quebec one year, usually at St. Highest in Quebec, in an alternating year, the following year in Ontario, in Woodstock or Sarnia, Ontario. Okay, and exhibitors from both provinces will travel back and forth to share the show. In the United States, the National Bonita Club has seven districts besides uh, the eighth one in Canada, and they're all geographically region as well. Each of those will have their own shows. And they can be a young bird show exclusively, and an all bird show, or an all breed, or all age show. And the big show is the National Medina Club annual show, which is held with the National Pigeon Association at their annual event, which in the next year is planned to be in Louisville, Kentucky in January, I think the end of January, around January 23rd, if COVID will allow it to happen. In, in a show, uh, generally the breeds of pigeons are broken down into four categories. Uh, the young birds and the old birds are judged separately and they separate cock birds from hen birds. So we have a class for young hens, young cocks, old hens, and old cocks. And this is just within a color, a, a, a single color. Okay, so. They're all judged separately, and then uh, it's not a, a in most most uh, breeds. The winner of each class, young and old, are all thrown together. So you have four winners, and they pick the best of color. In Medina's, we have many many different colors, uh, broken up by the blue family, the ash red family, the brown family. There are soft colors. That's the solid color ones, like solid whites, solid blacks reds and yellows. Uh, there are argents. In addition, we have Medinas are broken up by the solid colored birds that are called skeddies, such as this one on the, my right, when I'm facing them, and gazi, the ones with the white bodies, but they have a colored head and wing shield and tail. So these are the same color family, except that one is got a white body and one is a gray body, and they're bred together. They can be interbred, and you can get 
colors of each within a family, and they're judged separately. The Gazis are judged, as I said, by each color. There's this color Gazi, the Mealy. Over behind me here, I've got a blue Gazi. They come in tries in many, many different colors. Okay, so in a show program, progress, once you get past the color of each, all the colors are brought together, and the judge will pick a best of that variety, best Gazi, and he'll do the same with the Skeddy. He'll get best Skeddy. And those two are shown against each other, and the judge will pick the best of the breed, the best in show. Okay, shows uh, serve a number of purposes. Um, in my opinion, the, the most important value of shows is the social part, socialization where fanciers can get together and meet and, and, and uh, enjoy our own our company and uh, get to talk about our birds, our pigeons, uh, compare them. Uh, it's often a place where birds are bought and sold and traded. Yeah. and evaluated. Um, the second purpose, 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 purpose of shows is the competition part. Many of the fanciers are very competitive and they like to win. So we bring our best birds and we show them and we're rewarded after the judging is done by if you're fortunate enough to win the best of a color or win best of a section or win best of the show. And uh, that's very rewarding, of course. And then you're acknowledged uh, by your fellow fans here, both at the show and throughout the world in this day and age because of the internet. As soon as you win a show, it's on the internet within minutes and it's uh, known around the world. Um, it gives you an opportunity to evaluate your own stock of birds uh, against the standard and against the best of the others uh, to see which direction you're going, whether you're you're, you're, you're developing a, 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 a very competitive or strong strain, uh, uh, regardless of what breed it is. And now the same applies whether it's in pigeons, or poultry, dog shows, horse shows, whatever. They all have the same general purposes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm showing you two Medinas here that are related. These are both young birds raised this year. They've never been shown. Okay, this is the skeddy. This is a solid color example. This is gazi. Uh, genetically, they're the same color. They're ash red, barred ash red. This carries the, uh, the gazi factor, which gives you the white body, colored head, wing shield, and tail. Now, these birds are pretty good. These are both young cockbirds. They're males. And they're pretty good size uh, for, for the uh, for the breed. Um, they've never been shown in competition, so I can't say how good they are compared to others, but they have some things that I really like. They've got good legs. They come up through the middle and up the back, and I can get them to stand for you. Okay. This bird here shows really well, usually. Give them a little tail tug, and they'll stand up. You want to see the head up erect, yep. the tail straight, head up erect above the, the tail. If you look at a standard picture, you'd see mm -hmm. that. Um, feather conditions, important. Color is good. And again, you want to see the leg up there and you like to see them round yep. underneath, equally round below the chest mm -hmm. and up into the rump and the tail. Color is important in Medinas. Um, it, you don't want to see fall feathers. Yep. And that can be somewhat, particularly in, in the Gazis, um, you get body feathers that can be the color of this, and they can be cut out for showing groom for it. Um, feathers growing down into the feet. Mm -hmm. yep. That's not desirable, but we breed it because, and I'll, this is kind of interesting, you like to see a good strong leg on the bird. A lot of that is feather. The feather, when you get that, goes right down into the feet. Now those feet have been plucked. I've cleaned feathers off of the feet on that. Um, 
I'll show you a bird that, just for a second, that has a lot of feather on the feet that's never been groomed. Just a quick look at this guy, and you look at the feathers on the feet, and see how strong the legs look? Yep. yep. But if you were going to exhibit him, show him in competition, you go through and just pluck them out, clean them up. Okay, it's part of the grooming process. It's the same in this color here in the gazzies. We groom these by making the, the hood or the head cleaner by taking fall feathers out from here to here. I'm not going to do it right now, but just to show you, you could pluck that feather out or cut it out with scissors at the base. We call it a grooming. nice, clean grooming right there. Same with back with the vent line. If there's some fall white feathers up in here, they could be cleaned out along the vent line. Mm -hmm. If you had body feathers, a fall, a, 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 a colored feather down in here, you'd clip it out in the body so they have a good, clean outlet. You don't get that so much with the solid color birds, mm -hmm. the skeddies. They usually come clean. Usually the only grooming you have to do is this kind of thing here. You can pull these feathers out on the feet. And it doesn't hurt them if they're mature. They're not blood feathers. And clean it up, and that's what we do for each other in these guys. Just down in here. They can be cleaned out. Okay. And down in here, in the body, this could be cleaned up by cutting those out. And white feathers up in the wing shield, like this. That's part of grooming, too. This is legitimate. It's not cheating. All right. And this is a very good pigeon that uh, she's a yearling. She was shown last year as a baby and did very well in competition. Now shape, as I mentioned before, for a Medina in, in the standard is roundness. You want to see him round from the front. You want to see him round from the side. The legs right in the center, standing straight up. Kind of hard to do if they don't turn for you. There's a good example of it. The tail tilt, and the tail shouldn't be higher than the, the head. The head should be upright, and a very short back in here, okay, with no holes. What about the wings? Wings are supposed to be carried above the tail, okay, and not crossed over, crisscrossed. Picture. Yeah. The tail should be curled up, but not higher than the head. Yeah. If you look at it in this angle here, yeah. mm -hmm. you'll see the head should be up and yeah. carried up a little higher. There's, that's nice right there now. Sometimes they tuck in, quite, uh, the head will tuck right into the body, but when you're showing them, um, they'll usually show up in, in the standard very nicely. Um, there are a few things that are faults that are not acceptable in this breed. Um, eye color, if the eyes are not proper, like in this eye, for example, this, these are good eyes. They're, generally it's orange or orange red, but if it's got a crack in it, the pupil bleeds out into the iris, mm -hmm. that's no good, that's a bad fault. If they have white showing in the flight feathers, if there's a white feather in here, that's a disqualification. Not desirable for breeding at all in this breed. Okay, many other breeds accept that, but not in Medinas. Unless it's a solid white bird, of course. Then white flights are okay. Right. Um, head is supposed to be nice and round and oval, with height over the eye. Okay, we're inside there, my main breeding loft. Um, this loft was built about six years ago, five, six years ago. It's uh, 24 feet wide, 12 feet uh, in depth, and uh, height uh, seven feet at the front. Drops down to six at the back. We have it divided into two sections. Um, these are the breeding pens at the back. They're roughly 30 inches wide. 20 some odd, 22 inches in depth, and they're that size because Medinas require a lot of room for breeding. Mm -hmm. Okay, they can be very combative, and they'll set up in there, 
and raise their own babies in there. They will feed their own babies and uh, drop down to the floor and, and uh, we'll keep the babies in here until they're weaned. Um, during the winter months, once they're finished breeding, we separate the males from the females. This side of the loft that we're in now, these are all female medinas on the floor. I generally start mating my birds up in February of each year. They get settled after a couple of weeks and hopefully we start seeing eggs in March or April, depending on the, the age. Of. Young hens are a little later sometimes. Um, I breed them up in separate breeding pens in a different building and bring them in here and they'll get settled into each of these, whichever they decide to go into. I don't I <laughs> let them pick and we put nest boxes in. Um, once they start raising babies, I have two ways of dealing with them. I either let them feed their own or I keep foster parents, a different breed of racing homers and flying flights. And they're in a different building. We can do it by taking babies there and trading them, mm -hmm. or I take the eggs away from the Medinas and put them there and let them hatch them. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we get babies both ways. The Medinas are successful in raising babies. Some are not good parents, some yep. are. Um, but the advantage of having feeders is I can get more rounds of eggs by taking eggs away from them and giving them to the foster parents, and then they come back into production quicker. Mm -hmm. We've got two windows in each se section, uh, the male section and the female section for the winter. These, these windows are kept open year round. Unless we get a severe storm in the winter, we get a snowstorm, I put glass windows in here and keep them out. The birds enjoy going out there, they get sunlight, there's all sorts of ventilation. I bathe them out there, we give them bath bands once a week. In the summertime, maybe more often, mm -hmm. okay? And you can see the birds go on their own. They don't have to be encouraged to go out. Yeah. Uh, we're in the hen section right now. Only hens during the, the, the non-breeding season. Once the birds are finished breeding, they separate the hens from the cocks. And these are hens, both old and young hens, that are keeping for breeding next year. Uh, when I start putting them together uh, late in the, in the winter, or early spring. The section next to it, which is the same dimensions, 12 feet long, are where I keep the male birds. When I mate them up, the male section is, uh, the width is the same, it's 12 feet. Uh, these are some of the breeders that I'll be using next year. Well, these are youngsters? There's young and old birds in here right now. The um, most of the young birds are out in the fly pan by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. The one mealy at the end of the feed trough is a young bird from this year. The others are all old birds that we're looking at. The birds you're looking at right now, there's, I see two mealies and a blue in the, these cockbirds, and they're all young birds right now that you're photographing. Kind of blustery and windy out there right now. The one down below you is a, is ash red or mealy it's a red bar and depending on the breed and medinas we call it mealy going behind it is a blue blue skeddy that's one of the colors i'm strong in uh, that is a an old hen the one in front is a young hen this is a mealy gazi and if i can pick her up just heard that we talked about or showed in the show pens. That's a, a youngster, a young baby. Those are blue skeddies. They'll be part of my breeding program. More blues and mealies. That's the common color that I've got. Both gazzy and skeddy. Mostly skeddies. Skeddy? Okay, and I don't even have a, a... I used to breed those. I've got that bird because I lent it to somebody a year ago. They bred from it and brought it back. So um, it's a very, very pretty, pretty color that I'm not sure I'm going to use it in my breeding program.